Hey there everyone, I uh, want to do a quick video on a new tourniquet I came across. Uh, this is the ETQ Wide by Snake Staff Medical Systems. Um, I found this on the Tactical Medicine subreddit over at, well, Reddit, and a couple of the guys were talking about it and I thought, well, hey, I like a new tourniquet and, you know, I'm always checking out what else they got out there, so I figured, why not? So I went ahead and ordered the Y. They have a thinner one. Um, this is the one that they sent for TCCC certification, which was kind of the most important thing for me. And that's a side note, they are not TCCC certified yet, but they have sent a few samples off for testing, so hopefully they get that. Right, I wouldn't mind having a few other options out there. But this was their wide. Like I said, they do have a narrower one that they uh, have available, but it was already sold out whenever I went to go get it, but you know, I wanted the wide anyway. So I got this to compare directly to the Cat Gen 7, which I have right here. And as you can already tell, there is a pretty good size difference on this sucker compared to this. And just putting hands on it right at the beginning, one of the first things I checked was the windless strength, right? This, <laughs> I don't know what they made this out of, honestly, but it is freaking, I mean, it is, it's freaking tough. Like, I'm really putting some effort into that, and I can't get to move at all. And in comparison on the cats, on some of them, you can, you can feel a little flex, but, but this one just doesn't give it all. I, I do like that. Uh, another thing compared to the cats is that this one has, you know, it's got texture on it. It's your standard cat windless, nothing too crazy about it. Uh, they really, they really put some texture on this right here. I mean, it's, you were gripping this sucker, which I like. I like that a lot. I mean, blood is slippery until it starts drying and it starts getting like tacky and sticky and it's, it's just no fun on either end of that spectrum, honestly. Uh, but just, you know, like I said, hands on this thing. A few of the quick observations I made before I did any testing was the windlass strength, uh, the attachment point for the windlass. Like on the cats, you have the Velcro. You know, that's everybody's familiar with that. Uh, this one's pretty cool because it uses like a carabiner style, right? So basically it goes in and it's set. I mean, it's pretty easy. Nothing too crazy there. Um, some of the guys were talking about this, which is a, a chem light. Actually, it's a small miniature chem light, and this one's already been activated because it really it really did not take much effort to activate that whenever i pulled out of the package i was just kind of fiddling with it and boop set it off uh it only goes for about two or three hours because it's one of these really small ones um and it's held in place by small allen nut right there so i guess it could be replaceable if you really wanted to um, but they were talking about how it seems kind of gimmicky which, uh, yes and no. So in a tactical situation, you, you don't really want to draw any attention to yourself or your patient, especially if you are the patient, right? Uh, and a light that is attached to your injured limb uh, might just do that, right? But also in a civilian setting, um, being able to rapidly identify where a tourniquet is placed I think is pretty cool. I think if they used a red chem light, I mean, maybe a little bit better, you know? But overall, interesting addition to that. I mean, really, I, I've never really seen anything like that before, except on one tourniquet. It was this, like, shitty rubber band looking thing I found from, I can't even remember what company, but it was on Amazon. I'll, <laughs> I'll probably throw a picture of it up here. So you guys know what I'm talking about. But that was probably the dumbest tourniquet I've ever seen. It was basically just a giant zip tie. Anyway, getting back to this. They come pre-staged out of the package, which I thought was really nice. I mean, it was properly staged. This one, like I said, has been fiddled with already. So I kind of have it the way I'm used to carrying one. You know, not that it's the right way. It's just the way I have trained myself to use it and have been trained to use it. So, you know, everybody find your own way that works. I'm going to open it up. Um, one of the other cool things that I, I found on this was the uh, time stamp, if you will, on the strap, kind of like the the cat here, you know, whenever you have it placed, and it's got a place for you to write the time and stuff on there, so does this one, but it also has this QR code, right? I, re <laughs> I really thought this was cool. It, it also gives you some basic instructions here. 
Number one, it says place high on the limb between wound and heart, right? That's pretty, most people can understand that. Pull this strap as tight as possible and then fasten. So, you know, yank that sucker like you're starting a lawnmower, get it wrapped around, and then twist rod until bleeding stops. I like that they put instructions on here. That's such a cool idea. And uh, also, fun fact, made in USA. Really love that too. But what I was really impressed by was this QR code right here. So if you take your phone, in my case, I'm a poor and I have an Amazon, or not Amazon, <laughs> I have an Android phone. So when you scan that, it immediately takes you to an instruction video, right? So it takes you to their instruction video. Stay calm, check your surroundings, win the fight, or get to a safe location. If anyone is nearby, direct them to call 911. Identify any major bleed, apply pressure, and if there's something sticking out of the wound, do not attempt to remove it. Open up your tourniquet and put it around the limb. See, this I think Place is great because it, it's it's really nice. Whenever, uh, if you've ever been to any kind of like crazy scenario, right, where like just stuff's going sideways, people are screaming and all that stuff, everybody's got their phones out already. Why? This is the day and age of social media. Anybody wants to go viral or just be like, man, yeah, check this stuff out later on. It happens all the time. If you If you yourself are injured and have this out and you can be like dude i don't know what to do man i don't know what to do dude scan this real quick all right watch the video just lay the phone down next to you just chill all right or you can try and walk them through it i mean it's already got the basic instructions here but sometimes a visual aid helps and it's nice not to have to be like you know do that you can just scan this and go and i really like that um one thing i noticed right off the bat that was different than the <laughs> right off the bat different from the cat was this strap, the occlusion strap, right, is actually a one inch piece of nylon, which is what the cat tourniquet uses. It just goes all the way through the strap um, to the very end. This one is only a small section, all right? It, it's, it's basically just enough for the windlass to use, and it doubles back on itself. So whenever you are using this, like I said, this one's been fiddled with a little bit. You know, this is the other end. This is basically just Velcro. There is no tensioning happening between basically this end and right where the stitching ends there. It's all just happening right there, which does mean you have to get this strap on as tight as possible, right? Because you don't have really a lot to work with. It can be kind of a con there. Um... Another thing that is kind of good about that though is this allows you to actually apply it to limbs that are very small in diameter, right? They say down to one inch, which I freaking believe it, man. I mean, look, you can get it down to, to that. I'm not saying you do that to apply it to fingers or anything, but you know, this may be good for canine officers or people that work with animals. Um, somewhere if you're working where uh, there might be a lot of children, you know, this might work very well. I would actually prefer using this over a rat's tourniquet, which has kind of been the go-to for a lot of small limbs. Um, I, would, I think I'd rather use this just because it's a lot more familiar to me than the rats. You know, I, I get it. You know, some people love them. Some people hate them. I, I like traditional-ish style tourniquets, and I think this one would fit the bill. Um, as far as quality i would say that it it definitely feels very well made despite despite it being so lightweight um, that's one of the things that drew me to this was how much lighter it is than the cat gen 7 right i carry a tourniquet every day in almost every aspect of my life I keep them in the car I keep them in my bags, I keep them in my pocket. The fact that this one is so small and so lightweight makes me want to carry one more often, right? Because sometimes I'm like, dang, this thing's just like in the way. You know, it's not like heavy, you know, it's not like, oh my God, this couple of ounces or whatever is just gonna, just gonna do it for me today, I can't make it. No, nah, it's just the bulk, right? Like this tourniquet, the Snake Staff, ETQ, 
wide, even when it's fully, you know, packaged up and everything, it's still significantly lighter weight and smaller profile than the cats, which, you know, it's not like the cat's huge to begin with, but look, I just quick, quickly folded that one up. It's still smaller, still thinner, and still lighter. In my own testing, right, using just a pulse oximeter, um, I didn't have access to my fancy ultra sound machine to view blood flow and everything like that. But just using a pulse ox and everything, this did stop bleeding on exterior limbs, on my arms and my leg. Um, it, I definitely definitely cranked the sucker down pretty good i mean it occluded blood flow it did what it was supposed to do um until this gets t triple c certed or cotc approved i'm probably going to stick with carrying the cat gen sevens but i'm going to be keeping a very close eye on this company i really like what they're doing i like they're they're trying to simplify um and normalize really the carry of tourniquets and making it accessible to anyone and making it more comfortable and available to people because if you're not going to carry one and you know in addition to that if you don't know how to use one um, it does no good to buy one in the first place right so I do like what they're doing I like the idea uh, the company seems pretty straightforward. I like that the stuff is made in the United States. And I like that they're trying something different. I mean, I really... The carabiner thing to me is freaking cool. I mean, even one-handed, you pop it in and you're done. There's no strap. There's no Velcro to get filled up with junk, you know, because I, I wore one of these on an ankle, you know, pouch for a long time. I don't like to keep it, uh, you know stowed with the velcro closed because the velcro is kind of an afterthought right once you got the sucker torqued down and you pop in the tourniquet you know the windlass there it's uh it's pretty well secured in place with that tension that's put on it this is like for transportation you start moving people around and stuff but sometimes you get so much junk filled up in there especially when i had this in an ankle pouch that you know the velcro maybe didn't stick right um, with the carabiner, <laughs> you don't have that issue. There's nothing really to get stuck up in there. It's just click and go. And that sucker, it ain't coming out once you're done. Um, like I said, I have zero concerns over the windlass braking because, good lord, it doesn't even flex at all. I don't know what kind of unobtainium material they made this thing out of, but it's pretty sick. Uh, the nylon quality seems really good. The stitching seems very, very well done. Um, and everything about it just kind of checks the boxes for me, except for that short little occlusion strap. I, I'm, it worked, but I kind of, in some way, and I know it's not really possible with the way this thing is designed, that the occlusion strap was on the outside, right? Where it was distributing that pressure over the width of this material. I get it. With this design how it's set up currently, it doesn't allow for that. Uh, that's just a, a wish of mine. But that being said, it did get the job done. So I hope that Kotze gives this a good look at. I mean, anything that can save you weight when you're trucking a bunch of stuff around, like if, if you're carrying eight tourniquets in a med bag, which is, is not an unreasonable number, I'd rather be carrying eight of these than eight cats if it saves me a little bit of weight and space. I might be able to carry 10 or 12 of these compared to eight of those and still have the same amount of weight and uh, space in my bag. So that's a win-win for me. Anyway, guys, let me know what you guys think about this tourniquet or any other tourniquets that you found um, that you want me to try out. I'm always willing to drop a little cash and, and try a few more and, and kind of get like an honest opinion on them. Uh, I'm going to be doing some more testing with this and just kind of see how it goes. And if, uh, if I like what I see, I might add them to the store. I might just give a few away. I don't know. We'll see. Anyway, guys, really appreciate it. Thanks for joining me today. Be sure to check out some of the other videos we got, and I'll catch you in the next one.